Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, dear students. Grade 11, uh, lecture number 47. We are still continue last topic, topic number 6. Factors that affect the properties of ionic solids. Ionic solids done. So first factor is uh, electrostatic force of attraction. Electro static force of attraction. Uh, dear students, in ionic compounds, ionic compounds are called electrovalent compounds. The bond is called electrovalent bond. Means between positive and negative charge. Positive and negative. So when we are talking about positive and negative charge means great force of attraction between them. So ionic compounds are solid, rigid, high melting point, high boiling point, very strong force of attraction are there. So when you are talking about a strong force of attraction, so it must be positive and negative ions. So if we are talking about the sodium chloride, sodium has a positive and chloride has a negative cations and anion. You know how cations are formed by the loss of electron? We call it ionization energy. The minimum amount of energy is required to remove the electron from the isolated gaseous state of the balanced shell to make a positive charge is called ionization energy. If you see the page number in environment 201, article 6.51, electrostructive attractive forces are very strong in the uh, ionic compounds. So one electron is removed from the sodium and to form sodium ion, this is called ionization energy and formation of cash ion. Same case in the anion formation, the electron is added in the balance shell of chlorine atom uh, to give a mono chloride, monovalent, which has a negative one charge and we call it electron affinity. You should know must write also. In first case there was an ionization energy and in this case it is called electron affinity. So dear students, when one electron is added in the valence shell of halogen atoms to make a negative charge, the energy must be released. So energy is released in the case of electron affinity for the monovalent negative and energy must be absorbed when electron is removed from the hydrogen, uh, from the sodium atom to make a sodium ion to make a positive and negative charges. So when these positive and negative charges, they are full charges, high electrostatic force is created between them and I told you ionic compounds are going to be formed. So hard and heavy. It means that high amount of energy must be evolved must be released when the ionic compounds are going to be formed from their positive and negative ions in the gaseous state. Minus 787 kilojoules per mole amount of energy is released when one mole of sodium chloride solid is formed from the positive and negative ions in gaseous state. The reaction is the high exothermic process and you done uh, the coordination number. If you are going to see, also we will do in the next uh, coordination number. I think you done the previous. Number of chloride ions surrounded to a sodium ion 6 and same number of sodium ion 6 surrounded to chlorine chloride ions is called coordination number. Then there is another factor which is called radius ratio. Radius ratio, how I calculate? Radius of cash ions divided by radius of anion, you will get the radius ratio of 
the ionic compound. So dear students, if you have a sodium chloride and cesium fluoride, two ionic compounds, sodium and cesium group number one A element, chlorine and fluorine they are halogens group number seven. Seven A elements. So same, same nature. Halogen, halogen attack and uh, group number one halogen sodium and cesium. So students, the structure of ionic compounds depend upon the radius ratio. Means, if you want to calculate the radius ratio of sodium chloride, means radius of sodium ion cation divided by the uh, radius of chloride ion molecule you got the answer and radius ratio of cesium ion molecule divided by this radius ratio of fluoride ions what will you get the answer if they are both near same then they have the same geometric shape then both have the same geometric shape but if the radius ratio of sodium chloride and sodium chloride quite different, then they have a different uh, crystalline structure. So that is why the geometric shapes of the ionic compounds depend upon the radius ratio. So here in the given in the box. Limiting radius ratio cations divided by anions 0 0.732 and above we call body center Q. 0 0.414 to 0.732 this is called octahedral. 0 0.22 to 0.414 this is called tetrahedral. And 0 0.15 to 0 0.22 this is called triangular. You should see the one thing you will find. If you go from bottom, a point 0.15 to 0.22. Point 0.22 is a limiting. Then from point 0.22, the tetrahedral start. Means that there is some mixing. Because triangular stops point 0.22 radius ratio. And the same value tetrahedral start. It means that there is some relation. It means that there is some mistake. Because two values are same. Same case, octahedral 0 0.414 is the limiting, and the starting is a 0 0.414 for the octahedral. Same. And 0 0.732 is a n limiting for the octahedral, and 0 0.732 is starting for the bond to body center Q. So same means they should somehow mixing with this one. So that is why. Sodium chloride is a cubic in nature, so this will give a 0 0.732 and other also. You can see this one. Now, number third one is called a poor conductivity. Uh, so, all the ionic compounds in the solid state they are non conductors. Due to the no free ions in the crystal lattice, in the crystalline form, solid form, uh, they are uh, very uh, helped by the positive and negative ions. So there are no free ions there. That's why they are the non-conductors are very 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 poor conductor. But if you dissolve in water or uh, if you are going to melt, then free ions are going to be formed. So due to presence of free ions, then they are going to be conducted. Uh, energy. Uh, Lattice energy, already I have told you. Lattice energy is a bond formation, bond breaking. The amount of energy is released when one mole of bond is formed between the two uh, ions is called Lattice energy for the bond formation. And the same amount of energy is absorbed when you are going to dissociate or uh, break the bond between the two 
uh, cash ions and ions is called the bond energy for the breaking. So sodium chloride bond energy for the formation from the two ions is minus 787 kilojoules per mole and same amount of energy is required to break the bond between sodium chloride to form a sodium ions and chloride ions plus 787 kilojoules per mole. So this lattice depends upon the uh, size of the uh, positive ions and negative ions. Lattice decreases with increasing size of ions, whether cash ions or ion ions. So you, are, you have a sodium chloride and if you have a potassium chloride, so potassium has a, a larger size than that of sodium ion, so it should have less uh, a bond lattice energy or bond energy because uh, these will be less uh, tightly bonded opposite charge ions. Comparison of ionic and covalent crystals same ionic crystals are formed by the positive and negative ions they, mean they are going to be hold uh, together a formation of an an ions and uh, cash ions by electrostatic protective forces. Covalent crystals which are atoms similar to dissimilar elements together by the uh, covalent bond and uh, by a three uh, dimensional network we call giant structure diamond. Diamond is a very strong one which is a covalent crystal, very strong bond is going to form between this one. Formation already I told you sodium ions, chloride ions, cash ions and ions by the ionization energy and electron affinity to form sodium chloride. But covalent crystals are two type, uh, giant covalent diamond, silicon carbide. Uh, second one when the atoms join together by the sharing of electrons, just like the layers of graphite. Sodium chloride and ionic compounds, they do not conduct electrical in the solid state, only conduct with the, uh, when to dissolve in water. But the covalent crystals, Diamond does not conduct electric current, but graphite in the layers form, parallel layers is a very good conductor of electricity. Non directional in nature, ionic compounds because they are three dimensionally attached to the positive and negative ions. Three dimensional. That's why they have a no direction. So ionic compounds are non directional in character, but the covalent. Uh, crystals they have open structure due to the valencies are, are, are directed with each other so they have a definite direction. Ionic compounds do not exist in the form of molecules because again I told you that uh, they have a three dimensional structure and they held by ions. Lattice points, array of points, ions. So that's why they do not exist in the uh, molecule but the Covalent crystals, they exchange molecules just like uh, S8P4 ISH2O. Low density and high heat of fusion of ice. We done in the previous chapter. You know, uh, ice is formed when water is going to be frozen below uh, zero degree centigrade. So, density of the water is going to be increased when you are decreasing the temperature from. 25 to up to 3.98. 3.98 before uh, it is going to be increasing the density. So at 3.9 means uh, 3.98 in 4 degrees centigrade, the water has a maximum density that is about uh, 1 1.998 grams per centimeter cube. When you decrease the temperature more, the density is going to be decreased. When the density is decreased, volume is going to be increased because density is inversely proportional to volume. So when the water freezes to make a ice, the density is low and volume is high and about 9% volume is going to be increased. And density decreases, that's why ice floats on the water. Low density uh, show that uh, is ice floats on water we done in the previous chapter. Uh, it only form a thick layer of the ice on the water and the 
outside layer so an insulator that's why outside temperature is not going to pass through the layers of the ice and downward the temperature remains same that's why in water the uh, aquatic life is going to be uh, life many uh, months this is the very important use of the uh, density of the ice and keeping me over discussed and force believe that pattern of life of planet is going to be totally changed in absence of hydrogen bonding this is the due to the hydrogen bonding if we think that there will be a no hydrogen bonding in water then there will be a total life pattern of the on the earth is going to be totally changed different so this is due to the hydrogen bonding high heat of fusion uh, ice change into liquid water 6.0 kilo joules per mole amount of energy is required means melting if you freeze the same amount of energy is going to be evolved to make the, the ice uh, application in real life uh, ice absorb 333 joules energy for the every gram of ice melt it means that if we are going to give uh, 0.33 kilo joules per mole the surrounding absorb each drink the temperature of the drink without ice would rise up to 0 to 20 degrees centigrade that's why the drink containing ice would remain 0 degrees centigrade but 100 gram of ice would melt so this that's why it's going to be keeping the uh, uh, water is going to be uh, cold molecular and metallic solid in the molecular solids they have a covalent bond and they may be polar and may not be polar. They may have a dipole dipole force, they may have a Van der Waals forces. Just like in ice, they have a dipole dipole force, hydrogen bonding, sugar, they have dipole dipole forces, hydrogen bonding, iodine, Van der Waals forces, sulfur, H, phosphorus, there are four carbon dioxide gases. These are the forces, are weak forces, that's why they are called the Van der Waals forces. Do you have to see the properties? This is important. Metallic solids. You know, metal is made up of same kinds of uh, atoms or iron, metal only iron atoms. Copper, metal only copper. So, dear students, in the metallic solids, only the same kind of atoms are there. So, a special kind of bond is formed in metals we call metallic bond. So metallic bond is present in the metals and the how it is going to be formed, bond is formed, electron C or electron gas theory. We call electron C or electron gas theory to form a metallic bond. The students metals are good conductor of electrical energy with the free movement of electrons. Free movement of electrons are present in matters and the positive ions, positive charge ions, they are present in the metal with a fixed position. They are not going to move. Only the electrons are going to move and, and change the uh, place to place in their movement. So then what happens? The positive charge portion, position portion of metallic atoms surrounded by the electrons. They are moving, moving. Such a way that electrons serve as an atmosphere of distributed charges. Electron in a such a way that these electrons serve an atmosphere of distributed charges. The positive charge particles are immersed in it embedded, immersed. Such an atmosphere is called electron gas C. So uh, there are two forces are responsible for the formation of metallic bond. Force of attraction between electron gas and positive ions and force of repulsion between positive and positive ions. 
So when these two forces are equal and balanced, then there will be a no charge on the metal atom. So therefore, the counterbalance between these uh, force of attraction and repulsion, that's why whole metallic atom is a neutral one. Metals are good conductor of electricity, they have a shining surface, they are malleable and ductile, change into sheets and wires. Uh, malleability is due to the function of sheets and ductility is the function of wires. Without any factors, they are going to deform. They have a high melting and boiling point due to the very strong metallic bonds present. Molecular crystals already we done this. Uh, these are due to formation of the Van der Waals forces and the uh, uh, polarizability, dipole dipole forces. Uh, two types of intermolecular forces, uh, again, again, we have this repetition here uh, London dispersion forces and dipole dipole forces. Metal solids, they are together by the strong metallic bonds in the sodium, copper, iron, and uh, these metallic crystals, they have free moving electrons, they are surrounding towards the metal ions. Mostly the covalent crystal, molecular crystals are bad conductor of electricity, they have no free ions, but uh, battery solids are good conductors. They are not malleable and ductile, they are going to fracture, but they can be into small pieces, but metals do not. Yes, students, the last topic is uh, hygroscopic salts. Hygroscope means moisture absorbance. When moisture is absorbed by the salts, are called hygroscopic. Salts, some salts they absorb moisture from the atmosphere, are called hygroscopic. Calcium chloride has a property. Calcium chloride is a hygroscopic salt which absorb moisture from the atmosphere, and it is due to the uh, humidity present in the atmosphere. And this, these water molecules depend upon the uh, atmospheric conditions. In the uh, desert area, there are very low percentage of uh, water molecules, then there will be a less moisture absorbing ability. But in the case of where there is a rivers, where there, there are oceans, more water molecules present in atmosphere, there are more absorbers. So this, these compounds are called hydrates. Water of crystallization, hydrates. So calcium chloride, two water molecules are going to be absorbed. The water of crystallization is also going to be two for the calcium chloride. Sodium chloride, saline water contains water along the certain impurities. How they are going to be purified? If saline water is allowed to freeze in a freezing mixture of water, the impurities come up the surface in the form of ice at 4 degrees Celsius leaving behind sodium chloride. So ice and impurities are removed from the surface leaving behind pure sodium chloride. So dear students, with this, this chapter is going to finish. Uh, so you have to solve the exercises questions uh, very uh, important. Just I'm going to give you an introduction about the next chapter 7. Just like the string of iron, 
Rusting of iron is an irreversible process. When you put iron in the uh, humid outside area where the more have, more there is a humidity and there is oxygen, so in the presence of humidity and oxygen, so there is a reaction taking place to give iron oxide, and this iron oxide cannot again change into iron. So this is the uh, irreversible process. Digestion of food is an irreversible process. Precipitation reactions are irreversible reactions. On the other hand, the chemical reactions in which the reactants are going to form products and simultaneously the products change into again reactants. These are called reversible reactions. So we will talk about here the reversible reactions, how they form a dynamic equilibrium. Suppose, students, we have hydrogen gas one mole and iodine uh, one mole. Uh, they are going to form uh, two moles of hydrogen iodide in the gas state. So this is the forward step. When one mole of hydrogen combined with one mole of iodine gas to form a two moles of hydrogen iodide, this is the forward step. But this is going to be reversed back. At the same time, this hydrogen iodide uh, decomposed to form a hydrogen and iodine molecules. So these two half headed arrow shows that the reversibility. This is a reversibility. Reversible chemical reactions. So dear students, no uh, complete product is formed. It forms a mixture. So when the rate, when the reactants combine to form product, this is called the uh, rate of forward step. When the rate of reacting of the molecules to form product becomes equal to rate of reverse reaction, means rate of decomposition of hydrogen fluoride changes into hydrogen and iodine. So when they are when both equal, both rates are equal, rate of forward and rate of reverse, then this is called equilibrium state. This is called equilibrium state. We get a mixture. We get a mixture of hydrogen iodide and hydrogen iodide. Mixture of these both. One mole of hydrogen and one mole of iodine and two mole, moles of hydrogen iodide are present in equilibrium mixture. Both rates are equal. Because this, this does not stop no stop means rate of forward is an equal rate, rate of reverse has it, so we call it a dynamic motion. But with an equal rate, both rates are equal, that's why we call it dynamic. So a state of equilibrium is a dynamic equilibrium here. So dear students, we will uh, continue this one inshallah. Uh, we will see how this dynamic equilibrium is going to be established by using graph. So in the next lecture I will uh, went to discuss this and we started in number 7 grade 11. Thank you.